Hi everyone, good evening. Hi Kara, hi Mike. I hope you had a wonderful celebration of the sacraments and are about ready to have a good time together. I'm sorry that I can't be with you, but I'm so grateful that I still have this opportunity to be with you over camera and over the media. So tonight I just want to, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Cassie and I am one of Kara's good friends and have the honor of being her maid of honor for her wedding, even from afar. So when I first met Kara, I have to admit, it was a Halloween, college campus, you know, the normal costumes. And I was introduced to this girl who was dressed in a red shirt with big blue wig and her face painted white. She and Emily came to Halloween as thing one and thing two from Dr. Seuss. And I have to say that first night, I thought, this girl is crazy. And then I found out about her love of puns and her crazy love for the weather, and I knew I was right. But since that first night that we met, Kara and I have had the opportunity to be together in campus ministry and then become roommates and then become friends and over these last five years become closer than friends. I can really honestly say that that Kara is one of my best friends and is my other half. I may jokingly say that she's my soulmate, but I know that Mike gets that honor. But so I just, over these last few years, have fallen in love with who Kara is, her contagious spirit that I think anybody who's around her or who gets to know her gets to see that contagious spirit. Her energy and her life and her smile that lights up a room, we all get to get to know and enjoy and fall in love with that part of Kara. So I think too, I so appreciate that Kara is just such a fierce and, and loyal friend over the last few years that I've just gotten to see that and been on the receiving end of that love and of that graciousness from her. Uh, I, think, I think back to even in college when there were times where, or after college, where we would call each other on the phone to set up a coffee date so we could catch up. We would inevitably end up spending two hours on the phone catching up and sharing about what was happening in our lives. And then three days later, we would get together for coffee and spend another two hours catching up and probably then spend time with our friends and spend another two hours chatting and hanging out with our friends. And so it just always felt like time flew when I was with Kara and when we had those times together. And I think that's still true. I think she can attest to the fact that there are many nights where we Skype and it starts out at nine o'clock and then all of a sudden it's 10 o'clock and then it's 11 and at like 11.30, one of us has to be the responsible adult and say, okay, we have to get up in the morning. It's probably time to go. <laughs> I think too, uh, just a testament to Kara's amazing, amazing loyalness and her, her friendship is that she knew that coming to Trinidad to visit me meant that it was gonna be hot and sweaty and that there were gonna be all these bugs and she still came. And on top of that, when she came, she had to come along with me to a retreat center while I had to do a bunch of work. And she had to sit inside the room and just wait and we got to spend our free time together. And it was such a joy. Kara made those moments so, so happy and, and so full of life. And what could have been a stressful week, she was just my rock and my mainstay. And I think that's been true about our friendship in every level. And her friendship with so many other people is that she is always there and always ready and always willing to, to be that rock. Even when things aren't so great for her, she is there. And that's just such an amazing gift in her friendship. And I think even in this week, while we were debating about whether or not it made sense for me to come home, she was right there with me when we decided that that it couldn't happen. And I think that shows the way that she sacrifices for her friends, the way that she sacrifices for those that she loves deeply. And that's a gift that you don't find often. I think too, that I just wanna to speak to Kara's adventurous spirit. And again, what would a Kara and Mike wedding be but an adventure? And she's always willing to find the way to make a situation fun or exciting or find the funny parts of things. And I think that just brings light into this world and is a gift that Kara has to share with all of us. I think back to snowball fights in college. I think back to dyeing our hair together. Yes, Kara, dyeing our hair together. Um, I think back to the times after college where 
you know, we might have wanted to stay home and she was ready to play a game or ready to go do something or ready to get out into the world and, and have that adventurous spirit. And so I just appreciate all of these amazing things that Kara has and gives to, the, gives to us as her friends, gives to you as her family and, and friends and gives to the world. I've been with Kara since she was a little freshman, education major, and I've seen her grow into this amazing, compassionate and loving therapist and friend and fiance, now wife, and all of these amazing gifts that she has to offer. And I'm so grateful to be along on the journey for that. Now, Mike. Mike, what I remember of Mike most in college was he was that guy who never had his book in front of him, but was always excelling in his classes. Just insanely intelligent, um, wonderful gentleman. I remember him being grounded in his faith. But I think the thing I remember most about Mike is that everybody who knew him said pretty much the same thing. And as I say this, I'm speaking it into my head. I'm speaking it in my head as if I were Duncan or Nick. Oh my gosh, Mike, he's the best. Mike, he's great. That's what I remember most about Mike from college. But after college, when Kara said that a relationship was budding, he still kind of had to earn, earn that spot because I wasn't letting my best friend fall in love with just anybody. And so over the last five years, I've gotten to see Mike through Kara's eyes and the way that he's generous and the way that he's willing to work with and communicate and, and grow to become a better person, that he loves Kara into heaven through his relationship with God and, and the way that he loves and cares for her. I've gotten to see the way that he's intentional and practical and two, see his sense of adventure and see the way that, the way that he lights up Kara's face when she talks about him and, and the way that they've worked through the hard times. I think we can all agree that in this week we've seen Kara and Mike in difficulty and we've seen hard decisions have to be made and the way that they've made them grounded in their faith, grounded in love, grounded in practicality and understanding and they've weathered this really tough time in an amazing way and they've worked as a team to do it and so I think Mike you've earned a good place I can trust you with my girl now right and I so tonight Kara Mike I know I can't be with you but I'm here praying for you and celebrating with you and rejoicing with you at the fact that together you're starting this amazing journey and you are you are getting ready for the biggest adventure of your life. And I can think of nothing better for either of you, for your friendship, for your love for each other, and for your marriage. I just know that this is, this is a marriage that will rock time and will stand, stand rooted in faith and be strong in the face of trial, but will also be full of fun and laughter and goofiness and I hope a lot of amazing adventures together. So know that I am praying for you, that I love you, that I miss you, and that I am ready to celebrate when I come home. Congratulations. I love you both. Let's give a big round of applause for me. So everyone, let's raise our glass and make a toast to the new couple. Congratulations, Mr. and Mrs. Canfield. All right, now let's give a big round of applause for maid of honor, Miss Cassie Chamillon.